Hi there, my friend. This is a video in which we are going to be talking about two common themes or major frustrations that I see over and over again with agile coaches and scrum masters and even aspiring ones. And I will tell you, I myself had my fair share of those as well. So no shame in it. They are common, but getting past them has everything to do with you become the most effective agile coach that you can ever be. So let's take a look into them together and see, do you recognize yourself into any of those? Let's get started. So a key piece in that one is to really boohoo, don't be a victim. I mean it. It might seem harsh, but remember that you were the coach. Detach yourself positively from really what's going on. Remember that you can't force people to do anything you can strongly suggest, but that is the extent of it. Ideally, you'd be collaborating with people to improve their process. They will be joining forces with you, and maybe that's not what's happening. So Remember that people don't just trust and listen to you just because you were the coach. You didn't gain any special status overnight. And more often than not, you are in the position that you are because a leader wants you there. It might not even be what the team would have asked for or would prefer. Now, first things first, let's separate. Are they resisting an idea or are they resisting you? Let's consider that they are resisting you. Have you, for example, taken time to establish a relationship with people before you go around telling them how to be agile? Your number one priority when you come into a team or an organization is to spend time with people, observing, listening to them, spending time trying to understand them, where they come from, what things have been done, what have worked, what do they think? Without this, you might really need to be extremely charismatic to skip, to be able to skip this step. And even then I wouldn't recommend it. Now, if we look at the second one, are they resisting the idea? Are you someone who just repeats the same thing over and over again? Kind of like a broken record type of thing. They say people need to hear the same thing up to seven times before they decide to take action on something. And let's face it, even if this is true, you possibly can improve your odds by explaining things in a different way. And also you should remember, people are not necessarily all compelled by the same argument. So let's take the case of flow. Like seriously, who cares about flow when you say it like that and you give the explanation on the lean value stream, people get more often confused or separated. It feels a little bit distant, but Let's say if you're talking about some people care about being overworked and overloaded with a huge amount of tasks to be done. Other people might care about their ability to promptly respond to last minute incidents and requests and do, do so with quality without having to worry about the things that they need to drop to attack that instant, for example. There's even people that are mostly worried about only working in high ROI items. They really want to spend their very valuable time and boy, are they right on doing the things that matter most. So as you can imagine, each of these examples will carry their own arguments and the conversation with people will be very different. And all you are helping them to do is establish flow is protect the flow of their work. So you don't need to go all scientific on them. Then the next thing would be checking your scarf. I would put a video for you in here. It was a video I did on the scarf model. And that was really a game changer for me in particular in my communication skills. And I would then ask you, are your interactions threatening? It is very subtle sometimes. We don't notice, but we might be activating one of those five domains of either threat or reward in the interactions with people. And honestly, sometimes even you want to appear knowledgeable, but you're actually coming up as someone full of hubris and authority. Or maybe you are kind, but you were not clear enough. And, you know, people need clarity. That was definitely one of the big pieces that I needed. For me, it was a big misstep in my, in my communication. So scarf is very useful. And then lastly, just remember, these are human beings. Agility is all about humans. Change is all about humans. Organizations are made by humans. So 
that is always front and center in your mind. What do I mean by that? Use downtime to speak with people. Don't just come in when they are in the pressure of delivering something. You know, they have tight timelines and you're trying to make them listen to you. Like, seriously, have some empathy and think, how would you react under those circumstances? In fact, every time people are in the pressure to, to deliver something, I would say, unless you are part of the team as a contributor, member of whatever is being delivered, it is your duty to get out of the way that is not necessarily a great moment for coaching them forward. And then the second one being, oh, they are not making enough progress. Says who? And is it your own idea of success or is it theirs? So if this is your own idea and oh boy, as agile coaches, we do have this picture perfect idea of the great agile team. I would suggest to you to take yourself out of the picture if you can for a few days up to a full week. And when you come back, I promise you, you would be surprised about so many good stuff that you will see taking place. And that's because two things will happen. One is that you gained distance and you're able to see things more clearly and all the good things that the team is doing, all the progress, all the new skills that they're gaining, you will have a completely new appreciation for that. You'll be able to see before you were too much into the details. You couldn't, you couldn't see the big picture. You were zooming in too much and now you're zooming out. But the second thing that might be happening in there as well is you just took the pressure off. You're out of the picture and the team can really experiment and try without you around. And no matter how kind and how awesome you are as an agile coach, it does happen that sometimes the team needs to have a no eyes on us type of thing to really try new techniques, new ideas, and just to have conversations where nobody else is listening. Now the question remains, what are you using to gauge for progress. Is it some standard that you and the team agreed upon or is it some arbitrary idea that you put in your mind of what they should look like? It is not uncommon that people think that agile transitions should go smoothly and quickly or that high performing agile teams should look like this picture perfect paradise of a team, when in reality, it's really far from the truth. And just at a glance, you can't tell that in the dynamics that you observe, a team is really high performing or not. Sometimes what you think could be a dysfunction is actually just a very direct way and convoluted way on how the team works together and it really works for them. Also, make sure to not be stuck into linear thinking. Progress is far from a straight line. And in fact, it would be more like a, a sinuous curve full of detours. And then remember that change is a human process and it has its own pace. The only thing that you can really do and you need to make sure is that there is some progress being made in the right direction. How do you do that? Good old faithful having regular check-ins and discussions with the teams and the groups that you coach. And what is it that you discuss and check in? Progress. Progress based on the standards that were agreed. And sometimes you will have the sponsor, the hiring manager, the leadership that you know is hiring you. You also have conversations with them and ideally that triad together. So nobody is left wondering what progress looks like and the level of transparency as far as progress and as far as the expectations for the teams, for yourself as a coach and for the sponsoring leadership is out there in the open. And finally, don't check in too often either. If you are, for example, checking your weight every day, either to lose or to gain weight, if you see daily, you might worry about things that are just not true. So you need to put some distance between yourself and the measurements. And the distance usually is time. So instead of checking every day, measure for progress every week, sometimes even monthly, make sure that you put that you give a good distance so that you can truly spot progress. So that's it, my friend. That's the video. Those are two very common frustrations I see all the time with both season and beginner agile coaches. Like I said, I had my very fair share of those. So you are more than welcome to the club if you're experiencing any of those. And I hope some of the uh, insights in here were useful. The key thing is Remember that in order to grow as an agile coach, the very little spoken piece is that you have to grow a lot as a human being. Instead of looking at 
others and what is out there. Do a lot of inwards working. There's a lot of self-development, self-awareness that needs to happen here for you to become that very great, effective, professional agile coach that only you can be. So I hope this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.